versus NP is a classic unsolved problem in computer science, but there are other relationships between complexity classes we don't know much about. We don't know if problems using log space or non-deterministic log space are the same. We also don't know if NL equals P. Going larger, we don't know if NP equals P space, or if P space equals exp time, or if exp time equals x space. Is there anything in complexity theory that we do know? There are actually many known relationships in the complexity zoo. One is that P does not equal exp time. As a reminder, P is the set of decision problems that we can solve with a deterministic algorithm in polynomial time. We like to shorthand this as the set of problems that are easy to solve. Exp time is almost the same, except we allow the algorithms to take up to exponential time. Giving our algorithms more time allows us to solve problems we couldn't before, and we can prove it using our trusty technique, diagonalization. We've used diagonalization in the past to show that there are different kinds of infinities, show that the halting problem is unsolvable, and prove Gödel's incompleteness theorems. It is a useful technique to prove that two sets are not the same. We list out everything that is in set A. Then we use this list to construct an element which is in B. We then argue that by the nature of the element it cannot possibly be in A, and therefore the two sets are not the same. Let's apply this to P versus exp time. First, note that P is definitely a subset of exp time. If a problem can be solved with a polynomial time algorithm, then it can definitely be solved in exponential time since polytime is faster than exponential time. Now, as long as we can find an algorithm that's in exp time but not in p, we will show that exp time is strictly larger than p. Let's think of an execution machine that can take any program plus an input for the program, and simulate running that input on the program for a polynomial amount of time. If the program is taking too long, then the machine just rejects. In this case, too long would be exponential time, so we stop simulating after some time exponential in the size of the input. This execution machine will take as long as the input program would take, capped at exponential time. There's also a small overhead cost to read the input, process it, and run the simulation. We can probably keep this overhead cost down, so let's say that this execution machine will take at most exponential time. Now we want to build a contradiction program that cannot possibly take polynomial time. Our contradictor will take a program, then give it to the execution machine as both the program and the input. Whatever the executor says, our contradictor will return the opposite answer. If the executor says accept, our contradictor rejects. And if the executor says reject, our contradictor accepts. If we list out all possible programs in P and inputs to the execution machine, we can see that our contradictor is just doing the opposite of whatever is on the diagonal. This specific implementation of our contradictor takes exponential time, since the executor takes exponential time. However, is there a polytime algorithm that gives the same output as our contradictor? Well, the contradictor can't be any of the polytime algorithms on our list due to diagonalization, so it can't be in P. Therefore, P does not equal exp time. You may have noticed that the argument is pretty generic, and the fact that we were comparing p and exp time only came into play when looking at the runtime of the execution program. Indeed, we can separate p into much more granular classes, such as problems that only need a linear runtime, a quadratic runtime, or any other polynomial function. We call linear d time of n and quadratic d time of n squared, respectively. We can then replace p and exp time with these other classes and essentially use the same argument. We have a much more generalized theorem, known as the time hierarchy theorem, 
which says that d time of f of n is a strict subset of d time of f of n squared. With such a powerful technique, why are there still so many unsolved problems in complexity theory? Could we use this argument on p versus np? Well, going back to the argument, if we tried to replace exp time with np, how would we show that our contradictor is also in np? It seems like we need to be clever to get diagonalization to work, but the Baker-Gill-Solovey theorem actually shows us that diagonalization cannot solve p versus np. The proof shows this using our friend the oracle. An oracle is just a magic program that can immediately solve some specific problem. For example, an addition oracle might give you what two numbers are when added together, and a halting problem oracle can tell you if a program halts on some input. We can then think of the class P with a halting problem oracle, for example, which would be the set of problems that can now be decided in polynomial time, given that we can easily solve the halting problem. baker gill solovey shows that there is an oracle A such that P with A and NP with A are the same class. In the universe with oracle A, P equals NP. They then show that there is another oracle B that we can add which does the opposite. P with B and NP with B are not the same. So in the universe with oracle B, P does not equal NP. Why does this matter? Let's say we're given a proof that P equals NP that is not able to separate out these oracles. We can then do a find and replace all p with p using oracle b, and np with np using oracle b, to get a contradictory proof, since we know that p and np with oracle b are not the same. We can do a similar thing to a proof that p does not equal np. Any valid proof of p versus np needs to be able to recognize whether or not it is in a pretend universe that contains an oracle. Unfortunately, our diagonalization technique is one such proof method that cannot pull out these oracles and therefore can't be used to solve p versus np. Diagonalization treats both of our sets as black boxes and so any statement proved with this technique will also hold if those black boxes contained oracles. This result shuts down not just diagonalization but many common techniques that might have been tried to solve p versus np. It really punctuates just how challenging the problem is. However, I think it also highlights human ingenuity and all of the incredible ideas that have come about in pursuit of solving this problem. Yeah.